Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to try to distill down uh, some training concepts because these are questions that people bring up a lot. And when you really look at the research and you look at what's out there, research on actual trained lifters, you know, there's a few things that we we notice. And then so, you know, you have people asking about going beyond failure, drop sets, things like that. And here's where you have to find your balance. And this balance, it absolutely matters uh, for people who are either using very, very low amounts of PEDs or people who are completely drug free. All right, this, this nuance matters a lot for these groups. Um, and keep in mind, you know, when you see certain people out there who are promoting other stuff, uh, you've got to ask what their doses look like, because that's a factor. Because what the research tends to show you know, when we talk about that 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group, that, that also assumes uh, recoveries on point, that assumes that there's still some reps in reserve. Because when we start getting really close to failure, and I'm not telling people to train to failure, I want to be clear there. I don't think doing very much training to failure is a wise idea, but leaving zero to one rep in reserve, that's a fantastic sweet spot. The thing is, though, when we start doing that, that you have to remember is that recovery gets compromised very, very quickly. And what you find, and there, there's been uh, some of the data shows that maximal muscle growth can be achieved in some cases with as little as six to eight total sets. When you start hitting failure or, or you get zero reps in reserve, truly zero reps in reserve, meaning let's say you're doing a five or an eight rep set, whatever it happens to be, 10 reps, and there you wouldn't be able to get another rep. If you just went immediately for it, it would just fail in the middle of the rep, okay? All right? And I count uh, something like a curl, for example. A lot of my curls are, are done what I would call a failure, but I'm not failing in the middle of a rep. I just curl until when I go to do a rep at the bottom. The, the weight just doesn't move. And we haven't necessarily failed in the middle of a rep so we don't get that negative but we've taken it you know to failure and I, I think there's a difference between those two things on movements like that all right with movements to where you can't just do it that way though you know those work great for things like curls lateral raises a lot of stuff on a machine other movements you know not so much you probably should stop you know where you say i don't think i can do another rep right that's close enough uh, because the actual failed rep doesn't have a good training response. And people have to remember that. doesn't have a good training response. So, you know, the question that people come up with is, well, what about really short break drop sets? What about, well, things like that, if volume is kept low, seem to do okay in the studies, only with really low volume. And here's why. You just don't recover set to set. Uh, and the same thing with the drop sets themselves or forced reps, stuff like that. What happens when we reach muscle failure? So and this is why this matters. So people need to understand this. So when you get close to failure, what's happening in the last few reps? And then for more advanced lifters, it can happen sometimes six or seven reps away from failure. We are using all the lower threshold fibers. All the intermediate fibers are being used and the way the body works as those fibers start to get fatigued, the higher threshold fibers, the upper threshold motor units and fibers start to turn on as we start generating fatigue because the body doesn't want to use the fastest twitch power fibers. It reserves those. Okay, we can do reps until we get to those because the intermediate fibers are just, they've had too much tension placed on them. They're fatigued. They can't keep lifting the weight. Okay. And that usually happens on, on most sets that are higher than a five rep max. The first reps uh, we don't always activate those units, right? Now, 10 rep set, definitely not. 15 rep set, oh, definitely not early on. We're using the others. And what happens as we get to those motor units, and keep in mind, those are the ones with the highest potential for growth. We know that the longer that we train, the more and more of our, our muscle growth comes from the fastest twitch fibers. The longer we train, that's what happens is that's all we have left meaning the, the lower threshold uh, muscle fibers seem to be limited in size and that scales with how closer they go up the chain, right? So over time, that's more and more a larger percentage of the muscle growth you get comes from the highest threshold muscle fibers. And when you get advanced, it's almost everything you gain comes from that. 
and less drugs come in the mix. Okay, so here's what's happening. As you get close to failure, those are the, the, the muscle fibers that are now being activated because the others can't produce enough force anymore. They got fatigued in the early reps, they're done. And a lot of those muscle fibers, as you get more advanced, don't really grow anymore. So you want to get to the others. So then people will say, aha, so, so when we reach those, what happens? They're fatigued. And if you can't replicate the set, that means the upper threshold muscle fibers are too fatigued. In other words, uh, you come in and you do two sets of 10, and then the third set, you can only do five reps. You didn't get much growth stimulus from the third set. If your break was so short or whatever happened that you couldn't recover enough that you only got like five reps, you probably got almost no growth from it. Why? Because you went back to those lower threshold muscle fibers that let you do the first five reps and the first two sets. Okay, do you see where we're going with this with the drop sets? Okay, so let's say whatever, you do a drop set. You do a weight, you take it to failure. You fatigue those upper threshold muscle fibers. When you reduce the weight and only rest, say, 20 seconds, right? Take whatever, 10, 20% off the bar or the dumbbell or the machine. You go for more reps. You're probably not getting much of the upper threshold muscle fibers, maybe a little bit on the first drop. But they, they haven't had time to recover. That's why you're weaker, right? That's why, you know, a 20% lighter weight, you still only get the same reps. Or you might only get six when you just got eight reps with a heavier weight. Okay, if that happens, you, you got almost no muscle growth from that set. You do another drop, you're probably not gaining really anything. Now you're so fatigued from this that these subsequent sets really, really suffer. Now if you're trying to do really low volume, this might you might get away with this. But if you're trying to do you know any appreciable volume, it's not going to work. You're just simply too out of steam. You haven't given yourself enough recovery time to get high quality sets in. And when we are no longer getting high quality sets in a workout, guess what? We're not stimulating further muscle growth. Okay, if you're not getting to health, once you're done with new gains and you've been training a couple years, your work sets that are not recruiting the highest threshold muscle fibers are probably not really providing significant growth. They're almost just maintenance sets at that point. Right? They'll keep those intermediate fibers uh, from shrinking. That's about all they're doing for you. So you need a context there. So when we start talking about these things, this is why the studies that show that if we rest long enough to replicate performance set to set, we get better muscle growth than if we're losing performance set to set. And that's just the reality of it. So that's our context for all of it. You know, so when we start discussing volume, what's optimal volumes, we've got studies on that, but here's the thing. Any volume to where you're seeing a really significant reduction in performance, you've, you've exceeded your volume for that workout for the short sort of breaks that you are taking. Okay? You've exceeded it. You're probably just chewing into your recovery at this point. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.